G'day, welcome to another episode of Built by Dan and yet another instalment in my GT40 kit build series. In today's episode, I'm going to be working on the dash. I really want to try and get this dash fitted. I have some concerns, I've highlighted them in a few little snips in previous episodes. The main one being that I feel like this return on the dash is too high and that there's too big a gap between this underside of the dash profile and the profile on the door. Now, I've been working through on my head for quite some time as to how I might tackle this. I am concerned that if I try and lower the dash too much to try and close this gap, that I may cause some issues with the clearance for the steering column, that it will then start to sit too high up in the dash. I can probably only lower that so much uh, before the steering wheel is going to be hitting my legs here. Secondly, I'm concerned that when I start to trim the bottom and try and lower the front of it, uh, it's probably going to actually throw it out of alignment. So whilst these sit nice and vertical now, I'm concerned that they'll start to angle back once I trim some of the height out. So this may not get resolved this episode. It may need for me to go away and do a quick crash course in fiberglassing so that I can potentially modify this dash to get the outcome that I want. Anyway, let's get stuck into it and see how it all goes. It's no surprise that today's episode is going to involve a lot of measuring, math and geometry to get the dashboard to fit in my GT40. So it's fitting that today's episode is sponsored by none other than Brilliant. Brilliant is a web-based math, science and computer science learning resource for all ages and school levels, covering the basics all the way through to advanced. Brilliant provides short, interactive courses on a whole range of math and science topics, making learning new skills and topics fun and engaging by making learning hands-on. You've all seen me apply a very systematic approach to building my GT40. Well, that comes from exercising my brain with interactive learning platforms like Brilliant. Over time, developing the analytical skills required to dissect a problem or equation into smaller manageable portions, whilst also still keeping an eye on the big picture and the impact any current actions or processes may have on future steps. Of all the different courses and topics that Brilliant covers, I've lately really been enjoying the scientific thinking course. But there's so much more to explore, with new content being added monthly. The Brilliant website is compatible on desktop as well as mobile devices, so you can get your daily fix whether you are sitting at your desk or on the move. So if you are looking for a new challenge or something to keep your mind active, be sure to visit brilliant.org forward slash built by Dan or click the link in the description below to get started for free. On top of that, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription giving you access to all courses available. All right, let's have a look at a couple of the things that I am looking at in terms of trying to decipher what's involved in installing this dash. Unfortunately, the build manual doesn't provide any details on the installation of the dash. It has a number of photos of dash, so just the front of the dash or the finishes of the dash state that it's not their particular dash. Um, there's two images that show it installed and how it sort of integrates with the A-pillar on the spider, but there's nothing that shows how it aligns or integrates with the, the profile on the door itself. So I don't know whether they've purposely designed this dash to have such a large gap um, on that angled piece or, yeah, I, I, like, I just don't know. Anyway, let's have a quick look. So these are pretty much the only two images I was able to find in the build manual that sort of give any guide in terms of like a visual guide as to how the dash sits in the vehicle. So one thing I'm picking up is that there is no sort of foot on the bottom of the dash here. It seems to have been trimmed. And if I look at the other image here, you can see that there's obviously been a bit of the dash that had to be trimmed to tie in with that pillar, but it doesn't seem to be anywhere near as much as what is kind of indicated on the dash that I've received. So this is what I'm referring to in terms of the foot. So it has this little return on the bottom, which I'm thinking needs to be cut off. I'm hoping we can see this on the camera. 
but there are some scratch marks here which I can only interpret as being a bit of a guide for where I need to trim the dash in order for it to fit in underneath this pillar. I don't really want to go ahead and trim that just yet until I know what I'm going to do for height. So there's obviously a section here that gets cut out. I'd rather do a single cut at that level if I can lower the front rather than having this big chunk cut out on the side. Again, just me being pedantic, I may not have an option. I might just have to bite the bullet and cut it down here to at least get the dash to sit back where it needs to and then look at what I can do to play around with trying to lower the front a little bit. In my mind, the top of that dash, so this point here that integrates with the top of the door or, or should integrate with the top of the door and just the overall top of dash just seems overly high. Um, now, I haven't been in another GT40 before. Maybe that's something I need to look at going and doing, reaching out to some local people that might have one that I can then go and have a look at and get some other ideas. But for now, I'll look to chip away at this. So this is what I'm referring to about where I make my cut. So at the moment, uh, the line, the scratch line is just sitting here which is just below this top plate of the chassis. Seems to align correctly, but I don't know. I'm just not convinced. There seems to be a lot that gets cut out here that the dash would integrate quite high and then the door's gonna finish down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and pull the roof spider off because whilst it is important to get all of that integrated, I also want to get it out of the way because my first point that I want to try and resolve is how the dash integrates with the door. Once I get the dash sitting where I want and tying into the door the way that I, I suppose envisage it working, I can then worry about what I need to do to get the spider to fit over the top, which it may still need to have some trimmed out of that top corner. So I'll get to removing that spider and then I'll check back in once I've got the dash sitting parallel with the chassis. All right, so with the spider removed, I've got the passenger door sitting at its closed position. And as you can see, I can get the dash to sit a lot better now that it's not obstructed by the roof spider. That top section, it just sits way too high for my liking. But like I said, I'm concerned that if I lower the height, it's actually then going to make the bottom of that upright angle back to the front of the vehicle and then won't align with the door. I don't know what to do next. Um, I've got some cardboard there. I thought about maybe making a bit of a cardboard template, but I don't necessarily know how that's going to help me at this point. I think what I'm going to have to do is just to make a cut I'm probably going to have to make a cut here on the side just so I can get the dash to sit right back where it needs to be, close the doors and then assess from there what I might need to do to rectify this. So I'm going to make a cut, fingers crossed, uh, worst case, we'll have to replace the dash. A few moments All right, later. so I've got those couple of cuts made on the dash and I've thrown it into the interior of the chassis. As you can see, the doors are now closed, so fitment is a lot better in that regard, but let's have a look at how it actually sits. Apart from looking amazing, just having a dash in the vehicle, you can start to see where the alignment just doesn't look great. It just doesn't finish well. The vertical section or the upright on the dash is really good. It essentially sits vertical or at least parallel with the profile on the door. But as soon as you get to that top angled section, it just starts to deviate significantly between the dash and the door. Interestingly, that's the driver's side. It doesn't look too bad. But when you look at the passenger side from the other side of the vehicle, it actually looks a lot worse. It seems to sit a lot higher. 
than the driver's side. I'm just not happy with that. For me, that top section needs to come down. As I said earlier, it actually wouldn't hurt for the whole dash, the top of the dash to be rotated down a bit to sit a little bit more flat on top. I did have to loosen off my steering column, but all in all, it seems to sit okay. I might actually just tighten that up before I go too much further, just to make sure that it's not going to sit up too high. But basically, if I was look to, looking to drop the height a little bit, I'd pretty much be looking just to take this bit, this step up out, just to bring the front down and hopefully then I won't actually need to trim much, if anything, out of the this top corner of the dash for the A-pillar. It's the same scenario on the other side. So it's about one centimetre or half an inch. You get a better view of it there. So I've just literally cut a thin slot just to be able to slide it over this sheet here. It is sitting hard up against the door hinge. So if I'm going to make any adjustments to try and lower the top and it's going to rotate around, I'm probably also going to need to trim off the back edge of this. Otherwise it's not going to sit back fully. Um, it is going to result in the bottom sitting further to the front. So it's not going to be vertical, but there's not much I can do about that. I think I would just have to then cut the face off this and refiberglass it out a little bit further to try and get it vertical again. I'm going to take a few measurements. I'm going to bolt up the steering column again just to see where that sits as the dash currently sits in the vehicle and then get a few measurements. So if I take half an inch off the sides and rotate the front down, do I actually have half an inch to play when it comes to the column? Like I said, I think it'll be okay. That's just me lifting it up, but I've easily got half an inch before I even get to the existing cutout. And I could always take a little bit more getting closer up to this recess. I'm probably going to put the camera down while I do that, take a few measurements and see how I go. A few moments All right, later. just checking back in. I have checked a few different dimensions. Um, key one for me was to measure from this front point here on the dash down to the top of the sill and happy to say that they're pretty much within a millimetre or two on each side. Um, so that's good. I know at least the dash is sitting fairly level or so let's say symmetrical, but it probably still doesn't explain why on this passenger side, it looks like it sits so much higher compared to the door. Coming around, quite a bit of variability between the top of this plate and just the top corner, let's call it, um, of the upright on the back of the dash here, or the front of it, let's say, it's the front of the vehicle. So obviously it looks, it, it looks like it, humps up quite high here, it actually does. Typically, I've got about 40 millimetres all the way around, 40, 45, yet here it gets up to about 60 millimetres. So it seems like that corner of the dash is just probably warped. So it creates more concern in that, how is this actually going to fit under the little lip of the spider where it intersects with the windscreen? So I think that'll be the next step is to see if I flip the spider over, I've just got it sitting on the floor there. If I flip it upside down and just try and position the dash in there and just see how flush it sits with the front lip might give me a bit of an idea there. So obviously it just sits in behind here. And then lastly, I've taken some advice from some of you from previous episodes and I have gone and made a bit of a cardboard cutout. So I'll just set the uh, camera up on the tripod and I'll show you what I've done there. All right, so I've just moved the dash out of the way just so there's a bit better contrast uh, from that door frame. 
But essentially all I did is I had a piece of cardboard there. It was complete. I traced around the inside following the door profile and then just carefully cut that out. So as you can see here, I now have a nice profile of my door. If I just move that in slightly. So I could use either piece. Ideally, this one gives me the shape of the door, but this is the one that I'm more interested in because that gives, if we, with that sitting just flush on the sill, I get the shape and height of the door. And by playing around with how high I raise that, I can then gauge along the inside of the dash, how that's going to sit if I actually look to lower the front a little bit. So, I'll now drop the dash back into place. And what I've got here is where my door currently sits. And then I can look at raising that up to see how well it matches the profile of the dash. I'll just grab some packers to sit on the bottom to simulate sort of a 10 mil rise and see how I go. All right, I'll start with 10 millimeters. You can see there already 10 millimeters already brings it to be a more consistent gap all the way up the top, uh, up the side, and then across the top as well. It's not quite the same gap as on this side, but it's pretty damn close. If I add another five mil to that, so we've got a total of 15 millimeters, that's looking a lot better. Again, it's still a bit larger. I feel like I could probably go almost 20 millimeters, but I think that's just going to be too much in sort of the scheme of things and considering everything else such as the um, the steering column. I did actually lift that up into place and there isn't a lot of room to play with with the existing cutout but there's still a little bit of gap and I can still trim out more if I need to. So at this stage I think I'm comfortable making a cut to low, try and lower the front by 10 millimeters. What I'm actually going to do is rather than cutting the bottom just yet I'm going to actually put uh, a 10 mil packer at the back here to raise the back to simulate just rotating that shape and I will then just have to trim a little bit on the sides before I go ahead and, and trim out too much. So just trying to take baby steps here so that I don't trim too much and then I need to try and replace it or I've got a fair job on my hands to try and fiberglass it all back up. So I'm gonna go trim those sides a little bit. I'll pack the back and I just wanna see how that sort of rotates it around and changes the a shape. All right, so I decided later. to refit the spider to the chassis. I've put some tape down just on these corners where the spider sits and I, so I can mark up the pillar. So I've just marked the outside edge of this lip. Doesn't really do much for me, but it's just another reference point. And then I've just traced along the inside there. So I've got the line of the inside of the spider and around this pillar with a few heights off the top of this plate, just so that when I sit the dash there, I can get a bit of a feel for where it might actually intersect. I've done the same on the other side. Got some very similar dimensions, which is a good start. So again, just marking that outside line and then coming around on the inside here and just marking the position of that pillar and a few heights. The other thing I checked as well, I did mention it before, is just how much space I have from the top of this plate to the underside of that lip that the windscreen sits on. And I've probably only got about 35 odd millimeters. I haven't quite got 40 millimeters. So noting that when I measured around the dash, it was sitting at probably on average 45 millimeters. I'm also going to have to trim down that lip, which is a good thing because that means that if I trim five mil, five to 10 millimeters off the front edge where it's gonna sit under the windscreen, 
and then I need to take maybe 10 millimeters off the vertical section, I may still actually maintain um, a vertical plane for the uprights on the dash. So quite happy about that, more work, but happy about the, the potential overall outcome. Just a quick snapshot of those markings with the spider removed. So as the sill comes around here, you can see that's the pillar sitting in there. Now it would be nice if I could just, if I have to trim anything, that I could just trim a section out straight from the front, just so that, and potentially come straight back to wherever it sort of lines up with the sill, only so that I could actually remove the dash without having to remove the whole windscreen and spider. I couldn't think of anything worse if you had to get back in under the dash for any sort of electrical issues and whatnot. So again, same thing on this side. I've got sort of my markup, it comes out and then comes back. And ideally, if I could just trim straight down here and maybe just put some sort of adhesive foam backing strip to sort of backfill that void, that would be ideal, I think. So with the dash installed again, knowing that I've got about 35 millimeters to play with, I've double checked, I'm actually sitting just over 30, so sort of between 30, 35. So this is the perfect height in the center. As I come around, there's a bit of a gap there. If I can push that down, it sort of comes down to the same sort of height. I'm just over 35 mil there and sitting at about 45, 50 millimeters here, which to me, just confirms that the front has to come down lower because this section of the dash will not fit under the lip of the, the spider where the windscreen fits up. Even though we've got a bit of a buffer here, I have double checked and there's about 50 millimeters back from that line. So the rebate on that spider sits about here. So I definitely need to get this entire outside edge below 35 mil. So I don't get the win that I was hoping for in that I thought maybe I'd be able to chop some of this out as well, which would sort of keep the back or the front down lower and keep those upright sections vertical. But it definitely does confirm that this, the sides need to come down a lot more. It just means I'm going to have to cut and fiberglass those uprights. So what I've done is I've just gone around and I've marked 10 mil. I just want to take it slowly. I'm going to take 10 mil at first, even though it probably needs about 15. So pretty much up to where that current cut is. But I'm going to take the 10 mil and see how that goes. So I'll take 10 mil off each side. And I've also just used a 10 mil packer and a blade to mark a line. It was really difficult on this side. It pretty much sits right on that um, that bend. So I'm just going to basically cut off the the little foot that it's got on the bottom. The other side takes a little bit more. I actually end up trimming the entire foot off. You can see here it sits just above the curve which works out really well. And then my little 10 mil mark here. So I'm going to go around cut each of those this side, interestingly, the 10 millimeters pretty much lines up with the, the factory sort of cut on that rear section. Uh, we'll just have to play around with that because I'm still concerned that the dash bulge is up too much here, but I wanna see how much I might be able to flex that once I cut a bit more out of here. So I'll go away, get that cut up, and I'll check back in once I've got the dash refitted. Okay, so cuts have been made. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy. It's definitely going in the direction that I was hoping it would. So the gamble to start cutting has definitely paid off. Let's have a look. So you can see here, I've just got some tape wrapped around the bottom. I've been using tape as my cutting line because I find with any other sort of mark, it gets covered with all the fiberglass dust as I'm cutting and you start to lose sight of it. Whereas you get sort of a little bit of a defined edge along the tape and it's easier to follow. So I have cut out the sides here. You can see now there's a bit of a, a gap underneath, whereas previously I only just had enough for the thickness of that top plate. And I've trimmed that leg off the bottom. 
It's not quite sitting 100% because I really need to trim the back here to allow it to rotate forwards properly. So it's not quite sitting in all the way here. If I push that in, it sort of raises the front again a little bit, but that's okay for now. I have just taken a quick measurement from this point on each side and they are still fairly consistent, although this side does seem to be sitting about five millimetres higher. I'd love to take five millimetres out, but when I get my spirit level and I check the level of the chassis sitting on the stands compared to the level of the top of the dash, they're actually pretty consistent. So it's now sort of tossing up between getting the gaps to look right or keeping it, at, keeping it level. So this is the other side, same situation. This side's sitting pretty good. When I close the door, I'll head around the other side so that we can actually see it. The gaps are definitely starting to look a lot more consistent. I would still like to drop it probably another five millimeters just to close it up that little bit more and then I might decide whether I go any further. You can start to see here, the bottom of that upright is starting to kick back towards the front of the car just as the dash rotates around. So we'll just close this passenger door and jump around to the driver's side so that you can see what I'm dealing with on this side. Unfortunately, it's not as good an outcome. You can see there's quite a large gap. So I have measured it. I've got just over 30 millimeters on the passenger side and about 20 millimeters on the driver's side. So this is where I'm sort of saying, do I keep the dash level or do I try and make these gaps consistent? I have measured everything. Like I said, the dash is only out by a little bit, but the door is also out by a little bit. So the passenger door, the sort of that angled section where the dash integrates with it sits about at five mil lower than the driver's door. So five mil on the door, five mil on the dash is what's giving me my 10 mil difference overall. It's definitely looking a lot better though. As you can see, I no longer have those peaks on the side. They're starting to lay a bit flatter and the dash is just a lot flatter overall, which is what I was hoping to achieve. So we're gonna mark up and cut another five mil. So on this side, we can see that we've still got five mil to where the manufacturer had cut. So we're still sitting a little bit proud here. This bit I still haven't touched because it was already fine sitting about that 30, 35 millimeters to fit under the spider. Now when I come around to this side, this is where it's all been warped a little bit. So I'm not sure whether it's just the mold that they use or whether it's warped coming out of the mold but it's sitting a bit high and I'm just wondering whether that might need some cuts later to try and reform that to get it to sit lower because it's just not going to flex. Now, when I get to this side, this side we're already sitting pretty low, but I'm going to have to take five mil out to get the overall adjustment that I need. So again, I think this is something to do with the mold. Potentially, rather than this bit sitting high, it could be that this bit dips down too low and it should actually sit up higher um, I'm just going to have to work with what I've got. I'm going to take five mil off each side here and then five mil off at the bottom and I'll come back and see how it looks. So it's now had later. 15 millimeters cut out of the height here and obviously the adjustments on the side where it recesses in to suit. As you can see here, it is sort of angling forward at the top, but just to give a bit of an idea, if I was to pull that back in line, I'm starting to get a really consistent gap all the way through here. The vertical section is still pretty good, but this top section still sits a bit too high. It's almost double the gap that I've got here. I may not be able to get it perfect, but I'm going to try and give it another go. I think I'm gonna try and take another five millimeters out. I was thinking if I took five mil off the bottom here, it probably would be the end of the world. At the moment, it sits hard on top of the 
the sill, but if I was to carpet that, ideally I'd have this sit on top of the carpet. So I probably need about five millimeter clearance for it to do that. So here's just a quick shot of the passenger side and how that's now sitting. You can see there's quite a larger gap just up in that top angled section compared to the driver's side. I'll see if I can get a view of the entire dash in one hit. All right, so just looking through the rear window here, this gives a good sort of overview of how the dash is sitting overall, looking at the two sides in the one frame. You can see that the passenger side is still sitting a bit high compared to the driver's side over there. I really don't know where to go from here, whether I trim that passenger side a or not. All right, later. so I've taken a total of 20 millimeters out of the height of the upstand on the dash and I'm really happy with how it's sitting now. Basically, I've got to a point now that in order to get the dash to sit properly, I now need to rectify the fact that I've lowered the front, which has sort of rotated it around. I'll show you what I'm referring to. So in here, this is obviously supposed to sit right back against this aluminium plate. And you can see we have a gap at the top coming down to no gap at the bottom. Again, because I've lowered the front but kept the back at the same height because that all seems to be the correct height to sit nicely under the the front of the windscreen so it's the same story on both sides so essentially i either need to make a relief cut so that i can just flex this upright a bit more so essentially what I'm thinking is I'd probably just have to cut in here just to get around that bend because that's still providing some strength to this front face and then probably make a relief cut straight up along that bend to this point here and that would allow it to flex through that natural bend or not natural bend but the existing bend that it's got in its shape. Uh, so that would allow that to pull forward at the bottom so that I can get that to be vertical. But before I do that, I'm thinking maybe I need to try and get this spider refitted and just make sure that I don't or won't need to take any more material out at the front here to lower this down. I want to make sure that it still sort of has a few millimetres, maybe five millimetres gap between the top of the dash and the underside of the, the return on the roof spider windscreen surround just to make sure that there's one room, probably for some foam backing to go on the spider or the dash and two for uh, leather trim to be able to be applied. In order to be able to fit the spider, I'm going to have to start cutting the top here. So I've got my mark here. You can just see here, this is actually the pillar itself. So when the dash sits back, I'll have to hold that back and get an idea as to how much I might need to trim out here for the spider to fit down over the top. Later on, I may actually look to trim a strip out of the dash and maybe fiberglass something up, like put a little infill so it's still got a, a complete infill and attach this section here into, onto the spider and have the dash just have like a straight cut come down so that I can actually take the dash in and out without having to remove the windscreen and spider. I just don't want to risk once that windscreen's installed, lifting the spider up at the front and potentially flexing and breaking the windscreen. So the same story on this side. You can see just the outline here. Try and get a good angle. You can just see the outline around here for the pillar. And with that pulled back, you, it's obviously going to need a slight trim. Now the pillar does come forward up at coming up on an angle. So it's likely that I'll need to take out quite a bit up towards the front of the dash, but I'm hoping I can keep that front face as one piece. So I'm going to grab the spider, sit it down on top and get a feel for where I might need to trim. So with the spider just loosely fitted over the top, you can see that it's starting to get close to getting the holes to line up for the fixings. Generally it's sitting in a pretty good alignment here. 
and I've just put some tape on the dash so I can probably look to try and draw a bit of a line as to where I might need to cut. It's probably going to be a very slow process where I cut a little bit, come back, cut a little bit, come back, just to make sure that I get it in the right spot. I'm just debating whether to use it sitting up here, noting that as it comes down, it's going to come forward, or whether I use my mark on the, um, on the top of the, the plate here on the chassis as a guide to start off with, and then trim from there. It's a tough one. So same deal on the other side here. It's just resting on top. I will need to push this back to make sure that I've got it sitting in the right spot before I mark and cut. So I'm gonna go ahead, mark this up, pull the dash out and make an initial cut and just see how it all sits. Because the only way I'm going to be able to test the fitment around the windscreen there is to get this sitting but so that both the dash and the spider sit flat on that on that aluminium plate. Obviously we've got quite a bit of a gap there at the moment. Alright, so I've already later. had two cracks at just trimming a little bit out. The first one I did, I literally just took a little notch out of the side just to make sure that I was getting the, ro the location right. Now that I've done that, I cut a slightly larger hole to start getting the pillar to sit in. And once I did that, it sat in quite nicely and I can work out roughly how much more I need to take out. So I've got a little bit to trim over on this side and then I'm gonna come up, maybe not quite that far, but I'll be getting pretty close to that based on where it was sitting. It is really hard to tell. You sort of just gotta play around with it because when you look at it sitting in there, it doesn't get anywhere near up to this point. Well, at least it doesn't look it, but I think it might be deceiving because the back of the dash is lower than the front. I'll just keep taking little bits out. It's a bit annoying, fitting, removing, fitting, removing, just to shave out a little bit more, but I'd rather do it this way than just hack at it first go and take out too much. So you can see here, starting to get a bit of a shape there. I'll trim out a bit more and see how we go. This isn't sitting quite in position at the moment. I'll have another crack or two at shaving a little bit more out and hopefully I can come back and I'm pretty close to getting the spider fitted over the dash. It's getting a hell of a lot closer. I've had about another two or three goes at trimming it down a bit. As you can see, I can actually sit everything down together and close the doors, which is pretty awesome. It's getting really close. It's not quite there, it's sort of, you can just see some movement there. It still needs to drop down a little bit, the spider that is. So I still need to trim a little bit more out. Basically, I'm hoping that the next time round, I can get it to a point where it sits fine. And then if anything, it'll just be a final little trim just to take a little bit more material out, to give it a little bit of room to move and to be able to align the dash. So here you can see it's all sitting pretty well. This is sitting forward. If I push it back to where it needs to go, it does lift the spider. So just need a bit more to be trimmed out, but it's really close and it's just starting to look really good all sitting down together as it should. I'll get to trimming the last couple of times and I'll check back in once it all fits together and screws down. So in the end, it took me about another three attempts or three trims before everything fit nicely. I actually found another piece back under the, uh, the windscreen that was fouling on the dash. So I just had to cut a bit of a chunk out. Uh, it's all concealed underneath the rebate, so no issues there, but it was doing my head in as to where it was clashing. And sure enough, that's what it was. I probably won't be able to show you. I've got it all temporarily sort of screwed down, just using the temporary fixings from the factory. But let's have a quick look. So as you can see, it's all sitting nice and flush. I could probably do with a little bit more of a trim in some areas, but generally there's a bit of a gap around.
There is a fairly consistent gap all the way around this front edge of the windscreen, except for on the other side, but it's actually the clamshell that sits higher, not the, 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 uh, the dash isn't sitting right. So in there, so there is a piece sort of just back in here that extends off the pillar and sort of comes back and strengthens it. You can just see here, there's sort of two layers of fiberglass. So that was coming back and fouling in this back corner of the dash. Quick look in here, I've tried to remove some tape, but it's a bit awkward now with the uh, spider fitted. So everything fits up quite nice. Would have been nice not to have this big hole here, but I may look to fiberglass that up later. I find that the passenger and driver's side dash sit quite differently, so they are trimmed slightly different just to get them to fit but at least I didn't come through this front face, which was sort of the main thing that I wanted to avoid. So it's all quite dirty and dusty. I do still need to sort out my steering column and I potentially may need to just trim a little bit more out above it just to give it some clearance. But I'm probably gonna wait for next episode for that because next episode I'll be pulling the dash in and out potentially a couple more times because I really want to do the gauge cutouts and switch cutouts and start to get them mocked up to see how it's all going to look. So I thought I'd finish off this episode the same way that I started out but this time with the dash fitted. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future updates. Hit the like button, drop a comment below and be sure to check out brilliant.org and support those companies that are supporting me and the channel.